everyone. I am Miloni Ghajalia from the EUS and Academy team. And on behalf of MA Network, I would like to welcome you all to another exciting academic session. As you know, MA Network Academy is a knowledge sharing platform to educate startups and investors about the upcoming trends in the startup ecosystem. Our masterclass today focuses on how to create in a cryptocurrency a starter's guide. Our faculty for today is Mr. Bahin Lakhia, who is an APP marketing at Wazirx, India's largest cryptocurrency exchange. He has been an entrepreneur for 12 years and is a cryptocurrency investor, analyst, and writer for leading publications like the Economic Times for over four years now. Bahin is also one of the top cryptocurrency educators in India and conducts programs for fund managers, co corporates, top businesses, and top business schools and various other cohorts. Thank you, Bain, for presenting this session to our members and guests here today. We will be taking the questions throughout the session. Do send them via the chat window and the faculty will address the same. You will also have the chance to ask your question in the dedicated Q&A segment towards the end of the session. I know the audience is waiting to hear from you. So without any further ado, over to you, Bain. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Meloni. Thank you, Mumbai Angels team for organizing this. Uh, it's great to be back with the next level session. Uh, I think last time we did, we covered a lot of ground and uh, I hope we have 74 participants now. I hope uh, at least most of you have watched that video to set the context of what we are going to talk about. Today we are going to dive deep into trading. Uh, but the most important thing here is to understand that uh, trading in crypto requires you to understand the fundamentals right when you invest in a startup or when you invest in equity what do you do you go to their website you check out their balance sheet uh, you see how many assets they have and what's their uh, profit like what's their uh, burn rate and stuff like that right so in crypto how do you do that how do you go and check balance sheet of bitcoin you just don't know right so that is the technology part you have to understand what kind of cryptocurrency this is and uh, what uh, the fundamentals are and fundamentals are technology. So I think we discussed that in the last session. Uh, if someone hasn't seen that session, what I would recommend is attend this session. But uh, after this session, you can grab that video, which is in your email for Mumbai Angel members. And I think you can watch that just to get an idea of what we are talking about in terms of fundamentals. Uh, I think we are starting to get questions already. So uh, we will keep this interactive. Uh, please post questions in the chat window. I will take them up as they fall in my design track. And if there is something that I miss, I will make sure that I take it up at the uh, end of the session. Uh, we are going to talk about basics of trading. Okay. So just for someone who has got introduced to what Bitcoin is, what cryptocurrencies are, and then get into a mode where I answer the fundamental questions, okay? Uh, I'm not going to give you any tips or any advice on what to buy, what not to buy. Uh, I will give you a lot of processes which you can apply to your trading strategies uh, and then get your results because everyone's trading style is different. Everyone's risk appetite is different, right? So we will talk about the process here. Uh, as a disclaimer, anything that I say here is not financial advice. Uh, I am not qualified to give you financial advice about what you should buy and how you should trade your crypto. All I'm going to talk about is fundamentals of why uh, crypto trading is different from, let's say, equities or investing in commodities like gold. And uh, we will get into some dynamics which are very macro. All of the things that I'm going to talk about are data driven. Uh, nothing comes from my mind here. It's all public data. Uh, you can go and verify all of that and then take your trading decisions. Okay. Uh, also, uh, when you trade, there are going to be tax implications. So I would urge you to hire some CA or watch out some videos out there on different channels on YouTube to understand uh, how taxes to be paid. I think a couple of people are saying no voice. Uh, I think you're audible, Parin. We can hear you at MA. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll just continue. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out again, uh, which we covered, I think, in the last session, 
is is the reason why cryptocurrencies uh, are different from any other asset that you've ever witnessed why is it why is it different and if it is different how do we go about trading them right why is it different because cryptocurrencies per se come at a at an intersection at an intersection of all of these technologies so let me just share my screen here and we can dive deep uh so when we talk about cryptocurrencies ideally we should be looking at them from all these lenses right uh, when we talk about monetary um, policy and but in your screen is not visible i think you'll have to stop screen and start again because your screen is visible okay give me a second mm. Is it visible now? Yes, this is fine. Thank you. Awesome. So, when we talk about cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin or any other complex technology out there, they are at an intersection of all of these subjects, right? So, ideally, to do fundamental analysis of one cryptocurrency, you should understand the economics behind it. You should understand how it fits in the political scenario. You should understand how it affects the psychology. What the cryptography is the core uh, at at blockchain technology then you have to understand monetary policy information technology so all of this we cannot cover uh, i think last session we covered the economics which were macro economics today we are going to get into the uh, trading part of it so when we get into trading ideally uh, everyone should understand the macro market cycles okay so this entire market is driven by bitcoin why do we hear so much about bitcoin and not about everything else is because bitcoin is almost 60 to 70% of market capitalization of crypto so imagine that right in in equities or in any other market you haven't heard of such a scenario where one uh, you can call it coin project script whatever you want to call it in trading terminology drives the entire market right without bitcoin nothing moves so these market cycles are created by bitcoin and they are a four year market cycle i will talk into i will talk in detail about that then we will look at bitcoin versus altcoin so bitcoin is large in terms of market share every other coin is called altcoin and when you trade into these different categories your risk profile changes and how do we look at that risk profile i'll get into that uh, also we discussed last time why do these cryptocurrencies exist in the first place it's very easy to lose uh, touch of this particular fundamental why do we need cryptocurrencies in the first place we need them because of decentralization right we want to do peer to peer transactions and that's enabled by crypto in every possible use case we have to look at how decentralized it is if something is centralized essentially what it what means is uh, you are trusting the founder of that project you are trusting the team you are trusting the government uh, of that jurisdiction a lot of risks open up so we will talk about these things okay uh, while i go talking about these things uh, you can start posting your questions in the chat uh, i will take them up uh, as i go along uh, if i don't take them up immediately just wait for it uh, most likely i have covered all the frequently asked questions here so first thing uh, which seems really boring but this is the thing that will help you make any trading profit which is market cycle okay so let's look at look at a graph uh, of bitcoin can you see this graph this graph uh sounds maddening right it looks like a bubble out here what's what's happening here why is the price just going up and up and up right so you can imagine this little peak that you see here is 2017 in 2017 the bitcoin price went up to 19500 dollars and today we are trading somewhere between 50 to 60 i don't know the exact price but i think it's 52 53000 is where we are trading right now so what's happening why is this this thing always going up and if it is always going up 
can you just keep making money like this uh, is this a bubble what happens right uh, this if once you understand this cycle uh, then what you do is uh, you uh, basically get an idea of when to enter the market and when to exit the market when to take profit what what your expectations should be right so just to give you some context in terms of trading a uh, bitcoin price about a few months ago was less than 20000 dollars uh, even 15000 dollars i think in november right from 15000 dollars today the price is above 52000 dollars uh, i think it touched uh, 60000 dollars as the highest four times growth in less than 6 months what what kind of madness is this uh, how can you even justify something like this right so to understand this to comprehend this uh, in crypto we don't talk about linear charts we talk about what we call logarithmic charts these are log charts so let me show you this same chart on a log scale right this is how bitcoin's chart looks on a log scale what does this mean this is tracking all the price difference on a scale which is large enough right so this chart i cannot really even understand what to make of this right because either it's just going to keep going up and i can keep putting money and if the price keeps doubling goes four times i should be making money right but you must have heard a lot of people lose money imagine if you bought at any price in last 10 years today bitcoin you should ideally not be losing money still people end up losing money why because they don't understand this chart okay when we look at this chart now you can see five proper market cycles uh, out of these the first cycle is considered an anomaly because not many people were in the market cycle last four market cycles are pretty robust uh, we can see the historic data and it looks perfectly beautiful fit on what we call this log chart right so why does this why does this look so beautifully done and why is every market cycle that you see here which is on a blue box every market cycle lasts for 4 years so you can see the last market cycle here from the bottom to top usually it goes from 15x to 20x uh when i say x it means 15 times uh there is no percentage calculation usually in crypto we don't use percentages because the price is highly highly volatile now this is not just uh a very lucrative market but it is also very risky market so because of the volatility you can make a ton of money but because of the volatility you can also lose a ton of money right so imagine if you end up buying at the top so the top was 19500 uh in 2017 18 imagine if you bought at 18000 dollars for 3 years the price keeps going down uh every day you wake up and see, you see your portfolio in red how do you know where the bottom is how do you know whether it's good to hold or sell or get out of it it's truly truly frustrating and that is why most people call bitcoin and crypto a bubble a speculation scam different words because they just don't understand this market cycle why are these market cycles uh four years why not five years why not six years it's because they are built into bitcoins economics so bitcoins code itself has some kind of an economics built in it what does this economics do it just creates this event you can see four arrows here these arrows signify an event called halving in bitcoin new bitcoins are generated by a process called mining and these miners work day in and day out uh, run large machines to solve some mathematical puzzles when they solve this these puzzles they get bitcoin as reward right uh, this reward is dependent on every block that is mined every 10 minutes now this reward becomes half every 4 years so every 4 years the miners reward halves that's why it's called halving when the miners rewards halve people know that the supply of new bitcoin 
goes down. The supply of the new Bitcoin goes down by half, which is crazy. So people just stop selling their Bitcoin. Uh, if no one sells their Bitcoin, supply goes dry, demand is still high. What happens to the price? It rises exponentially. A uh, lot of people complain that Bitcoin is very volatile. Uh, but an interesting thing to notice is the volatility keeps on decreasing every market cycle. So you can see initially the first market cycle is barely two years. And in this, the volatility is quite high from the bottom to the top. The second one, the volatility is still higher. Then it keeps lowering. So every year, this volatility goes low. So we probably have a few market cycles to make enough money because the returns are great and you can speculate. As more and more people join crypto market, uh, volatility goes down. More people understand this chart. They understand they have to expect reasonable returns and there is less speculation. So once uh, Bitcoin goes mainstream, the speculation aspect will lower. This is what happened with gold uh, in last 5,000 years. Imagine 5,000 years ago when people were trading in gold, no one knew the fair, fair value of gold, right? Even a few hundred years ago, uh, its value was really fluctuating. Today, with enough data, with, with enough knowledge, everyone knows that gold supply only increases 2% per year. So the price is more or less around that. Uh, that's how the market matures. Today, this market is very, very nascent. When we talk uh, about Bitcoin market today, it's about $1 trillion. Uh, gold is $12 trillion, right? So we are too small compared to any other market. I don't even want to talk about equity right now. Those markets are huge. So as this market grows, of course, the volatility is going down. As more people get aware of this, these cycles, they're going to play them well. And if you play them well, ideally, uh, the volatility goes down. So that's these are Bitcoin market cycles. So last halving from this market cycle happened in 2020, right? Mid-2020 is when halving happened. Uh, after that, you can see the price. Uh, Anywhere you go, you can see the price and you will see it has a nice enough pump. Okay, so let me start with the Bitcoin price and let's check out how the price went, right? This is called coin market cap. Coin market cap uh, aggregates data from all the exchanges. So if you're looking at cryptocurrency prices, ideally you should be looking at coin market cap. Now see where the halving was and what happened to the price after that, right? So you can see from July, 2020, the price is constantly rising, right? That's, that's what happens every halving. And then next year. So the caveat here is that next year, we are also going to have a bear market. Usually we have a one year bull market and three years bear market. Some people call it two plus two, but from a sentiment perspective, it's one year bull market and three years of bear market. So ideally either you hold for a long term, if you're buying Bitcoin, you know that this is uh, going to get valuable because the supply is decreasing. You hold it long term or you, you get and understand these market cycles. If you go to coin market cap and check out the entire long graph and then also zoom in. So one thing that I like to do is I like to zoom into the previous bull market. Okay. Now you can see from 2016 was the halving, right? So 2016 halving to 2017. This is how the price rose. Can you see what happened the next year? It crashed, right? So this is when people say Bitcoin is great. Bitcoin is amazing. It's the groundbreaking technology. No one talks about this for newbies. When people say it's a bubble, it's scam, it's rat poison, every possible bad adjective that you can give to Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin is none of this. Okay, Bitcoin is not god of financial instruments. Uh, it is not rat poison either. It's just a simple asset class that's been invented, and you should invest in it in a very very pragmatic manner. Don't fall for people who think Bitcoin is god. Don't also fall for people who think Bitcoin is rat poison because they just don't understand what I'm showing you right. Okay, so this graph is what you should. Uh, really really look at uh, kalpesh is asking so we can be long till december 2021 i can't comment on that kalpesh because that would be giving you advice right but i have shown you the process map this year's prices to 2017 bull run and 2014 bull run and you will see a pattern that pattern will give you the answer of where you should long right uh nirav is saying when is the next halving happening next halving will happen 2020 so 2024 right so next bull run will be 2025 right that's that's very clear it's open data you can go and you can check the charts and it's as easy as that uh ideally most people writing news about bitcoin they do not understand this Uh, in india there might be less than 100 people who have gone deep and studied the economics of bitcoin right why this happens so that's why you end up people who make money they don't know why they are making money uh, they call it a boon people who lose money they don't know why they are losing money so they call it rat poison you have to decide for your own okay i cannot tell you how to go about doing this but i've given you a process you can use this process and you can make some profitable trades now this is about bitcoin okay but bitcoin has a limit now you saw the volatility is decreasing you know here if you would have bought uh, 2012 you would have been mukesh ambani's brother right now uh, but we are we are still early but not as early as making crazy returns like people putting in 1000 dollars and getting 1 million dollars probably that's that's too high for bitcoin today right uh so what do people do once they get into crypto they get into a greed mode really greedy i don't want double my investment i want more i want more i want more right and what do they do they get into what we call alts right uh, alts charts are really maddening compared to bitcoin alts market cap uh i should probably put this logo here so as not to show which coin i'm talking about uh okay alts go much more volatile okay i will call it volatile though i'm showing you this graph which is only a pump okay uh but this is how it goes you can see from february there is some coin that i'm talking about uh, i will not talk about the coin any coin at all apart from bitcoin because all of them have a different risk profile but you can see this went from 4 rupees to 36 rupees and it fell to 24 rupees all in a span of two months uh this kind of volatility is never ever seen in any market as much as you can make money in this you can also lose money in this so uh yeah sashank is right mukesh bhai's brother lost most of it uh maybe he'll adopt you as a, as his brother uh, if you make enough money right but Uh, let's get into the risk profile of something like this bitcoin is the least risky crypto asset because it is completely decentralized why bitcoin doesn't have a company it doesn't have a ceo it doesn't have a jurisdiction no government can ban it right uh old coins most of them have ceos uh have a company so if that company goes bust your old coin goes bust uh they have a jurisdiction so if that jurisdiction's government ends up banning that old coin or regulating it or you know uh somehow controlling its utility then you have a problem uh the risk profile of an old coin uh, let me get into something like this uh i think now we have 140 members out here uh most of you must have invested in something right Let's say an FD. Today, the least risky 
investment is a government bond right if you buy indian government bond us government bonds they are considered the least risky because you know government is never going to go bust hopefully uh then you get into let's say a fixed deposit fixed deposit is considered a very safe investment but still riskier than the government bond why because banks sometimes go bust right uh, rarely but banks do go bust sometimes then what you can get into is mutual funds right mutual funds is where you give money to a fund manager and that fund manager has a lot of knowledge and you invest that fund manager takes you uh, takes your money and invests in the market right so you don't need too much skills Uh, and they are usually decently trained they are audited they are transparent there are laws to govern them so it's not uh, that risky but it's much riskier than your fd if the entire market crashes like it happened last year you have a problem or if your fund manager goofs up you have a problem uh, i'm not going to take nft questions or anything like that uh, we are looking at basic crypto trading right now so uh, let's focus on that uh then when you go from mutual funds let's say you go to zerodha or you go to money control and you start trading in equities this gets lot more risky why does it get lot more risky because it depends on your skill how you are trading how you handle your sentiments right so going from a, a fixed deposit to equities is considered at least 10 times risky right uh, when you go from equities to bitcoin it is at least 10 times more risky when you go from bitcoin to alt coins it is 10 times more risky than that so if you chart this on a spectrum this is where you have your government bond alt coins are probably the riskiest asset that you can trade in uh, someone is asking constantly is it legal to trade in btc yes it's completely legal to trade hold btc in india okay uh there's a supreme court order government is thinking about regulating it but it's completely legal to do btc trades in india as long as you buy from a kyc exchange don't buy uh, from from black markets pay your taxes if you are making any money on crypto trading pay your taxes and it's completely legal to do that uh, just don't end up doing something shady with it don't send your crypto abroad keep it with you treat it like an investment don't do illegal stuff with it and then you have you have no problem okay uh so i think that that's uh out of the way what about alt coins uh farooq is asking what about alt coins i think farooq you are asking about risk profile of alt coins it's at least 1000 times more risky than your fixed deposit so imagine that right uh with that risk profile in mind now we are going to look at how to categorize these some of the questions uh, are really practical uh, i am going to ask them uh, i am going to answer them in a bit so how fiat can be deposited what about tezos cold storage uh, why companies are endorsing btc all of that i'll take it okay uh, tax rate i will answer all of that Uh, first let's look at still look at fundamentals okay what are the fundamentals first thing uh, what do you do when you look at a stock you look at oh ye bank hdfc bank stock must be less risky you look at pharma and say oh wow pharma is doing pretty well uh, you look at some of the internet companies and say oh risky but doing well right how you have buckets to categorize what do you do in crypto in crypto you still categorize every coin in one of these four buckets what are these buckets first is securities uh, you don't talk about security cryptocurrencies in india right now because it's completely unregulated no one is releasing a security token what does a security token mean it's as good as a share so if you buy a token security token of a particular company it's as good as having equity of that company these tokens are not there in india uh, not legal in india so don't trade in these things uh, you won't even find such tokens trading uh, in india but just don't go out and do it second and the most popular bucket is utilities so utility utility tokens are like uh, your starbucks points your goibibo points airline miles right what do you do with your starbucks points 
you get them from Starbucks and you pay them at Starbucks. Why? They're limited to a particular ecosystem. Let's say you go play Farmville and you buy some assets in there. Those assets are also used inside Farmville, right? So they are called utility tokens. These utility tokens are completely legal in India uh, and their value is actually dependent on the ecosystem's value. So let's say if I buy uh, some weapons on PUBG and I want to sell it out on an exchange, it depends on the popularity of PUBG, right? So this is how you study the fundamentals of a utility token. When you look at utility token, you look at uh, what the team is building, how great the team is, how great their product is, and how many people would need to buy their token to buy their product inside their ecosystem, right? So today, imagine if uh, Starbucks points, uh, you could trade on an exchange, right? Some people drink a lot of Starbucks coffee, they would find them more valuable, so they would buy it. Some people are like, okay, I just got some points, but I'm not going to use this, so they sell it. There would be a fair market value of these tokens and they would be on a blockchain. So this is how you can imagine a utility token. And the more Starbucks in the country, the more these tokens are valuable. So they're somewhere tied with the ecosystem growth, right? That's how you look at this. Uh, third and second most popular category or bucket is assets. Uh, when we look at assets, you could think about Bitcoin primarily as an asset, right? It's treated like gold. Uh, apart from that, there are a lot of other assets now. Uh, someone talked about NFT, right? Non-fungible tokens. What this non-fungible tokens are, essentially they represent some asset on a blockchain. So today, uh, let's say I want to sell my car or my house to someone. Uh, what do I have to do? I have to contact them. I have to go to a registrar's office. I have to get details changed and all of these things, right? Uh, in a few years, uh, what we will see is all these real world assets being tokenized. So on my wallet, like I have my Paytm or GPay balance, few years later, you will just have your car or your house as a token. And these tokens are all you have to transfer to sell or buy trade in these assets. Right. When these things happen, uh, these will be categorized as asset tokens. Right. So today, if I want to go and buy an MF Hussain painting, it's very difficult to verify its authenticity, to know its previous owners, all of these things. Uh, these are use cases for blockchain. Blockchain will solve these things and they will be controlled by some other, other token. These tokens, their utility goes up as the asset value goes up. Simple as that. So you have to check out that when you come to assets. And there is a fourth category. Uh, this is not an asset per se. They're called stable coins. Uh, stable coins are uh, basically coins pegged to one or the other fiat currency. So you have something called USDT, which is the most popular stable coin. Today, what happens is when, when I want to buy Bitcoin, uh, I deposit my INR to Wazirex. With that INR, I end up buying Bitcoin. But with that Bitcoin, let's say I want to trade into Ethereum or I want to take their profits uh, in a way that I don't have to end up converting it to INR because INR transactions then affect my bank. There are charges for it and they are taxable, right? So stable coins are a type of cryptocurrency that you convert into. So what I will do is I will buy Bitcoin at let's say $52,000 uh, when it goes to $60,000, I want to book some profit. I will convert it to USDT, which is as good as one USD, but it is still a cryptocurrency. So I don't have to pay too much fees uh, to convert it to USDT. And let's say I imagine Bitcoin will drop again. And again, I want to buy it at 55,000. I will convert my USDT to Bitcoin. That's the core use of stable coins, right? So every time now you look at a cryptocurrency, you have to think about this. Now, uh, some of the myths we have to get into uh, and some of the practical stuff. Uh, I hope these, these will answer most of your questions, but if you have more questions, I'd be happy to take after these two slides. Uh, I'll quickly run through this. 
Bitcoin and uh, altcoin trading in India is completely legal. Keep your money in your wallet. Don't do uh, illegal transactions. Don't send money out of the country and pay your taxes. Okay. Uh, coming to taxation, uh, Bitcoin is not yet regulated or any crypto is not yet regulated. So what this means is for taxation, you have to pay at your highest tax lab. Uh, for taxation, there is a great video uh, by CoinCrunch. You can check check it out uh, here. I'll what I'll do is I'll just paste Crunch taxation video with Anush Parsim. You can check out this video on YouTube, and they will answer all your taxation queries. Also, there is a software called Bear Tax. Okay, you just download this software. Use it with your Wazirx or a Binance account, and you will. That software will tell you how much tax you are willing you have to pay, and it will give you all the details. If you want to show it to your CA, to your lawyer, anyone, right? So, this answers legality and taxation questions. Then we go to the most common myth that new traders fall for. If you are a new trader, you will definitely hear someone talking on. Twitter, Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, or your friend circle saying, "Oh, Bitcoin is too expensive. Buy this coin. It's only worth one rupee, ten rupees, and this will become thousand rupees tomorrow." That's the biggest fallacy ever. Okay, as an investor, we should understand that percentage growth is what we are looking at, right? Or multiple growth is what we are looking at. We are not concerned with the asset price. today if i were to tell you okay you know reliance is too expensive come buy my share my share is only 1 rupees would you do that it's stupid to think about this right you can buy bitcoin as low as 500 rupees today okay uh if bitcoin doubles in price your 500 rupees doubles whether you go for x coin or for bitcoin uh just buying smaller coin doesn't mean the coin has more potential it also means coin has more risk okay because it has not been proven it has not been accepted as yet bitcoin has been universally accepted if you are starting out don't go for smaller coins because you will not understand the technology behind it you will read articles uh, you will read some white papers you just don't know how to go and check for fundamentals unless you are a techie if one of you is a developer go and check out your coins code and figure out if it is great or not uh, most likely it is not otherwise they would have been talked about already just because your friends are buying something don't end up buying this just because elon musk is saying something don't buy because he has a team of 100 experts guiding him okay uh, you don't so you have to understand your risk exposure when you are taking these decisions a uh, third myth is it is speculation yes there is a lot of speculation involved in this market but there are fundamentals fundamentals are uh, economics and the technology most of us including me are not even capable of understanding this that's why there is so much speculation but if you are willing to learn about it amazing uh, i will someone asked me uh, to post a list list of books and uh, videos i will post at the end of this uh, to make sure that you can you can get some fundamental knowledge right fourth uh, why the price just keeps going up uh, this is true for bitcoin mostly not for every other coin okay uh, bitcoin price just keeps going up because there is scarcity and the market is too new right now okay it doesn't mean that the price will always keep going up there are certain estimates in the market there are fundamentals uh, supply there is something called stock to flow model if you are invested you if you are interested you can check it out uh, i can't cover this here but uh, you can check check it out of course uh, there is a lot of speculation in this as well so that's to talk about risk now coming to the second biggest myth blockchain not bitcoin this is the one of the biggest misleading things about the industry is to say hey blockchain is great blockchain is amazing we want to adopt that 
but we don't want bitcoin or cryptocurrencies these are all you know not really great for the uh, ecosystem country where whatever uh, that's a big myth there has been no blockchain implementation that is successful without bitcoin blockchain has existed at least for 6 years now uh there has been no successful implementation of blockchain without any cryptocurrency why because a blockchain is a distributed database which is driven by decentralized incentives how are these incentives maintained by cryptocurrencies right without cryptocurrencies you just take away those incentives why will miners keep mining why will nodes hold their nodes no what happens is then blockchain just becomes a big database on your amazon server so if it is just a database why don't you try some other database which is which is cheaper right so don't fall for this fallacy when people say that i want blockchain it's great but not cryptocurrency uh one other uh myth is that bitcoin cannot be traced uh and it is used for illegal transactions so swift uh if any of you have heard of swift is the international body for regulating country to country transactions right today if you want to send money to someone in us what do you ask for swift code right it's gen- is governed by swift swift has released a report saying uh, out of all the illegal international transactions bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are less than 5% right most of the trade is being done anyway in us dollar inr whatever you have uh, so that's one myth second myth is that bitcoin cannot be traced which is wrong if you end up doing something stupid with your crypto or your bitcoin tomorrow you are going to face that music bitcoin transaction can not only be traced they can be traced to the origin of that bitcoin so every transaction can be traced today you may think that okay you know i am i'm out of the woods 5 years later you may have someone knocking at your door and saying hey you did something illegal with bitcoin so just don't do that uh last uh myth is no fundamentals a uh, lot of people say that there are no fundamentals it's because people can't understand this uh, if you want to know fundamentals of specifically bitcoin start with this read this book Okay, there is a book called The Bitcoin Standard by Professor Sefidin Amos. If you just Google Bitcoin Standard, you will get it on Amazon, you Audible, everywhere. There are also YouTube videos explaining this book. Uh, there is no excuse not to learn this. If you are not reading this book and investing money in crypto, high chances you will lose this money. So don't do that. Okay. Uh, now coming to practical stuff, how to invest. go to bazirex or any of the top exchanges in india uh, invest uh, it takes 5 10 minutes to open your account do your kyc 80% of the kyc happens instant uh, if your kyc is stuck raise a support ticket and go ahead uh, there are just too many people signing up these days but it usually takes 10 to 15 minutes to buy your first bitcoin or cryptocurrency right Uh, how much to invest now this is a complex question a lot of people end up asking how much to invest right uh, i cannot i cannot tell you how much to invest because it depends on your portfolio size your risk profile how knowledgeable you are about cryptocurrencies per se uh when you look at uh, how much to invest usually i tell people go with if you have zero understanding absolutely zero understanding do 2000 rupees okay just go and invest 2000 rupees in bitcoin don't do anything else uh, some people call it party fund uh, saying if i go to a weekend movie this is what i spend don't go for that movie spend this uh now uh when you look at uh something like uh serious investment right how much you should invest in uh, i am not an expert large wall street hedge fund managers uh, including some of the black rock jp morgan all of these known names that are really really heavyweights in uh, investment industry uh, most of them have said 
allocate 1 to 2% of your portfolio. So if your portfolio is, let's say, 10 lakh rupees, 1% of that, very nominal amount. If you end up losing this money because of volatility, you are not worried. You are not losing sleep over it, right? So you can invest without worries. Uh, most important thing, again, when it comes to this, is if you have zero knowledge, 2,000 rupees. Read Bitcoin standard, 1% you gain more and more confidence, then you increase your portfolio allocation, okay? Uh, also, it's very hard to time market. Although I've shown you market cycles here, there is a high chance that you lose your money. So make sure that you gain knowledge first and then you increase your portfolio allocation. Uh, some people have a really, really large port portfolio. Uh, in these cases, what we have is we have a feature called STF, Smart Token Fund. Uh, someone just asked, uh, Sasan asked about mutual fund equivalent in crypto. Uh, Sasan, there is no mutual fund equivalent in crypto in India because uh, if you give me money and I invest on your behalf, I have SEBI okay, on my door. Uh, it's not completely legal uh, in India to do that as of now. So we have a copy trading feature called STF Smart Token Fund where smart invest, smart traders trade on your behalf and you can see everything is transparent out there. Uh, but still, this is not for newbies, okay? Make sure you understand the basics. Until you understand basics, just stick with Bitcoin. Don't worry and have a long enough time frame. If you have a five-year time frame, don't worry about what price you're buying on. Okay, and don't trade unless you understand markets. This brings me to the, my next question. Bitcoin today is, I think, 42, 43 lakh rupees. A lot of people come to me and say, Are yaar, 40 lakh rupees, it seems too late. I think I missed this train. Sorry, uh, this is not true. Uh, Bitcoin is just 10 years old uh, right now, and there is a lot of potential. Even if there is no potential, not enough potential, there is less risk in Bitcoin, right? Until you understand crypto space, stick to Bitcoin, whether it's 40 lakhs or whatever lakhs. If you are in it for five to 10 years, there's a reasonable chance you will end up making money instead of losing money. But if you're not trading, don't also keep checking your portfolio every day and say, oh, should I do this? It's just 2%, 5%, 2% per day and stuff like that. Stock market fundas don't work in crypto. Absolutely don't work in crypto. So learn the fundamentals of crypto instead of applying stock market strategies here. Uh, I'm going to very quickly talk about these strategies. Don't take it as financial advice again. Read about them, okay? Uh, most of us uh, in crypto are called uh, Bitcoin maximalists. What this means is you want to maximize your Bitcoin returns. Uh, you don't value your percent, your portfolio in INR or USD terms. What this means is if I invest something, if I invest in a coin, there are pairs, which are Bitcoin pairs and USD pairs. So let me just show you how this works practically very quickly. And then we can take questions out here. Okay, so this is how Wazirx looks. Uh, uh, Parin, again, your screen sharing has a problem, so you're uh, not able to see the screen. Okay, let me. Okay, is it visible now? Yes, this is. Yeah, great. So here you have INR pairs, which means you can buy, let's say if I search BTC, I can buy for 43 lakh 40 rupees today, 40,000 rupees, or I can buy it for USDT, which we just talked about. I can also trade in other coins in Bitcoin. So let's say if I want to talk about Ethereum today, this is what I trade in Ethereum. This is the INR price of Ethereum, and this is the USDT price of Ethereum. So a lot of people end up maximizing this chart. What it means is at the end, you just want to increase the number of Bitcoins in your portfolio. This is a very popular strategy in crypto. Uh, there is a ton of information about Bitcoin maximalism on Google. Just check it out. Uh, second strategy, which is very clear, uh, very easy uh, to do is half cut strategy. Okay. What this means is you just 
wait for the price to double whenever it doubles you sell half of it and then let rest of it ride okay a uh, portfolio distribution pie i don't think i can get into right now uh, and fiat hedge strategy you can google these two last of them okay uh, fiat hedge strategy is based on money supply uh, i think we covered money supply in the last session so if you look at any country's money supply when it increases you increase your investment in bitcoin uh, government buys the money supply back and you decrease your investment and that seems to work very well for some people so that's the gist of all the uh, trading part of it uh, what i think all of you are familiar with the interface and stuff like that from your questions i can see that so i'm not going to get into limit orders and how to set orders and stuff like that but you can uh, check that out on wazirek there are too many videos about that uh, now let me start taking questions chandni you want to you want me to take the member questions first or should i start with the chat sure please uh, let's let's head to the questions so uh, the first one is from uh, our member which is from siddharth uh, he is asking if uh, it is possible uh, to do fractional bitcoin trading in wazirx yes of course fractional bitcoin uh, buying selling trading is possible everywhere not only on wazirx wherever you go it's always possible because bitcoin is peer to peer okay so you should be able to deposit and withdraw fractional bitcoin if there is some platform that's not allowing you to trade fractional or deposit or withdraw coins don't use that okay um next one is uh, from madhura uh, he's asking what are a few exchanges abroad that one can sign up on and trade so one thing uh, madhura here is that uh, crypto is still an asset okay today i can't take 5 kg of gold and transport it to let's say singapore or us right i can't because it's moving indian assets outside similarly think of digital assets uh you can uh create account in an international exchange you can trade uh most of them are regulated by those countries so for example if you go to coinbase they just won't allow you to create an account as an indian they are in, they are they are a us based exchange most people end up doing this because they think oh bitcoin is 5% expensive in india i know why why you are asking this question because it seems that bitcoin is a little expensive in india think of it percentage wise okay if you are sending your money abroad that's not completely legal try and buy bitcoin on an indian exchange because only they will have inr gateways once you bought bitcoin you can transfer it to any international exchange you can trade once you book your profit book it on an indian exchange because these exchanges are self regulated okay uh tomorrow government will come and ask you why did you send your money to international exchange and you say hey okay you know i was only trading which is legal uh but depositing us dollars on coinbase let's say telling your cousin to buy it for you that's absolutely a no no don't go there for 5% returns okay uh you pay 5% extra because there is less liquidity in india right uh but when you sell you also get that 5% extra right so net net you are not losing any money uh in india if you want to trade on international exchanges because you have more liquidity for certain tokens sure inr transactions try and do it with indian exchanges because it's completely legal to do so we have kyc in place we have aml practices in place uh and uh, top indian exchanges all of them are self regulated so you will have no legal problems out there right uh i hope that answers the question chandu yeah so uh, there is a second part to it as well uh, which says and uh, will those exchanges provide the, their own wallets or would one have to uh, you know have their own wallet before trading so most of most of the newbies go on what we call centralized exchanges in crypto there are centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges wazirx is a centralized exchange so on a centralized exchange they already provide a wallet wallet for you on a decentralized exchange if you are new just don't trade don't trade for decentralized exchanges if you are new absolutely don't trade because 
that is a decentralized wallet and it comes with a lot more security risk right once you understand how these decentralized exchanges work you can use them in a decentralized exchange the wallet is yours you just connect it with the exchange and they swap it for you uh, but on a centralized exchange you always have a wallet it's like your google pay google pay gives you a wallet right whenever you sign up it's similar okay pravin yeah. uh, the next one is from nitin uh, is there any index type of cryptocurrency for crypto markets like sensex or nifty not yet not yet bitcoin is our index if you can uh, digest that that's our index fund okay that's also our hdfc bank and that's also our uh, nifty index so okay so the next one is from shaile he's asking uh, do all coins also follow market cycles yes all coins do follow market cycle uh so to understand the altcoin market cycle what you have to do is ideally go on coin see altcoin individual altcoin it's very difficult to chart uh most of the altcoins are new so you won't have data pre 2017 uh, if you have data pre 2017 that's great but you will never have data pre 2014 so it's not even two bull runs uh, as of now to chart the market cycle the way we chart altcoin market cycle is uh i hope you can see that right now you go on coinmarketcap.com and you look at market cap okay uh okay this is loading this is total market capitalization this is market capitalization excluding bitcoin so you can see the cycle is almost the same but now when you come to this graph this graph is also very unique to crypto sector because Uh, there is nothing like this uh, equivalent in any other market right this is called dominance chart uh, when you look at this you can see bitcoin dominance what does dominance mean is how what is the percentage market share of bitcoin versus all the other coins combined so what is today's dominance it's what 59% can you see that it's 59% market share is owned by bitcoin when does the altcoin rise when the bitcoin dominance falls so you can see this is uh somewhere in 2017 june is when bitcoin dominance fell crazy and this this thing big peak that you see here is ethereum which is the first and the largest altcoin uh not first altcoin but uh, largest and the most popular altcoin and you saw ethereum's market cap rose and most other cryptos market cap rose so this is how you track whether altcoins are going to do well or not now bitcoin's dominance is here if it falls suddenly where does the money go money goes into altcoins so that's how we track uh, alt market cycles it's a little more complex than bitcoin uh, but if you look at dominance chart you will understand a lot more about uh, how to time your alt entries and exits that's that's how uh, experts do it and you will find a ton of information about bitcoin dominance as well okay i hope this helps uh, with all coin trading yes pradeen it does uh, the next one is from uh, danush he asks since many big companies are endorsing bitcoins a lot of people are looking to invest in bitcoin which means demand will increase so will the miners mine bitcoins earlier Uh, which alters the market cycle that we are talking about so mm -hmm. there is a set number of bitcoins to be mined per block and that block is usually a set time frame so technically uh, we are looking at n number of bitcoins per day per month per year uh, miners cannot increase this number they cannot decrease this number so the supply is very predictable for bitcoin Okay, and the next one is from Aslam. He's asking, can you guide us on which platform to trade on and which platforms are easiest to convert into actual dollars? Actual dollars. Uh, okay. So, uh, Aslam, if you are from India, why are you talking about dollars in the first place? Think about INR, uh, because uh, ideally in India you will pay in INR and you will. Get out in INR. Trading in stable coins is still okay. 
but finally if you are dollar maximizing possibly if you are doing that uh, still go through indian exchanges and buy usdt from that uh once you buy any cryptocurrency okay whether it's bitcoin ethereum uh, usdt then you are free to go on any exchange and trade okay as long as they allow you some exchanges don't allow indian customers make sure you understand that uh but right now the biggest uh, exchange in the world is binance uh binance has a lot of features that most indian exchanges lack including wazirx you seem like a pro trader if you want to do any kind of pro trading that's where most liquidity is and most reliable coins are other big exchange across the world is coinbase i am not sure but i tried opening a coinbase account and they asked for a us kyc so i could not trade out there uh, but you can check out there are just way too many exchanges popping up these days uh, understand one thing when you are going to an exchange you are also trusting the entire company okay to handle your funds well and to make sure you know that uh, everything goes properly so uh, decide accordingly sure kareem the next one is can pr be deposited in the bank of course yeah yeah that's that's the job of an exchange right to convert a uh, fiat to crypto and crypto to fiat that's what we do uh exchanges uh are called on ramp and off ramp on ramp means uh, to go from fiat to crypto uh, and off ramp means from to go from crypto to fiat that's an exchange's job uh, shailesh is asking what is fiat shailesh you will have to see the pre reading video uh, fiat uh, i have explained in detail you can also google read on investopedia about what fiat is and youtube has a lot of exchanges a lot of uh, sorry youtube has a lot of videos about fiat as well so you can check that out okay so that is asking uh, how uh, old is wazirx as uh, you know asking he is asking it because he has seen that uh, he seen beta version on your portal so uh, wazirx is 3 years old uh, we are always in beta because we are releasing products every month uh wazirx is 2018 to 2021 year old we just completed 3 years okay uh the next one is from sumit he is asking should we use cold wallet uh, wallets like ezos for storage so uh sumit uh, ideally uh, going to a cold wallet requires some understanding it's good that you are thinking about it uh see with centralized exchange including wazirx you always have a custody risk what we call is custody risk right because we are holding your crypto for you uh if you have uh, the knowledge start exploring hardware wallets paper wallets but do a little small transaction before going into cold wallet because let's say you deposit one bitcoin in your cold wallet and you miss paste the address your bitcoin is gone right so what we do is going to cold storage understand the risks there are too many videos uh, cold storage has its own risk as well uh if you do some kind of a hardware wallet some kind of a mobile laptop wallet and what happens if that gets hacked or uh that gets lost or stops working because it's electronic right sometimes so understand all these risks once you understand all these risks try doing lot small small transactions okay there store it for a month or two get it out put it in once you are comfortable then you opt for a cold storage and it's always good definitely our aim is decentralization and as a part of decentralization you should hold your own crypto learn that that's a wonderful skill to have okay uh next is from atharva he is asking uh, conversion of bitcoin into cash is a waste <laughs> atharva uh, is asking converting crypto fro- to rupees is a waste yeah Sorry. uh that depends on what you are maximizing for atharva uh if you are a bitcoin maximalist of course uh converting to crypto converting to fiat is a waste if you are an ethereum maximalist converting to bitcoin is a waste uh you have your own strategies you have to figure it out
uh, the next one is from uh, Subhadeep. He's asking how li liquid are Bitcoin and altcoins? Uh, Bitcoin has a high, high liquidity in the international market. Altcoin, it depends on the market cap, the markets they are listed on, and then also the activity. Uh, right now, the market is in a bull run. So there are there is a lot of liquidity in altcoin markets as well. When markets go in pairs, sometimes you can't sell your altcoins at all because there's no buyer out there. So uh, Bitcoin mostly is completely liquid at this price, unless you are buying like, you know, 500 million or a billion dollar worth of Bitcoin, that's a different thing. Uh, but if you're doing anything, we've seen transactions uh, worth hundreds of million go like this. Uh, and that happens. Uh, altcoins, it depends on the market capitalization. Some altcoins have a market cap of $2 million, $3 million. So even if you want to buy, let's say, 50 lakh rupees worth of that altcoin, you can't buy it because there's no liquidity. Uh, you don't want to trade in such coins unless you are absolutely sure as well. Right? So, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, so the next one is from Sachin. He is asking, is there tax applicable only when we convert back to fiat currency like INR no. and not till we keep trading in cryptocurrencies like USDT? So I'm not a tax expert. Uh, what I've learned is also from some CAs, some lawyers in the crypto industry. Uh, ideally, you should check out CoinCrunch video because there are too many caveats for these things. Okay, uh, There are too many ways to treat your income from crypto trading payments all of that so ideal scenario is this but uh, as far as i understand you still have to pay taxes on your capital gains because uh, your transaction expires whatever transaction you do it expires before your tax paying date so even if you don't convert it's good to pay taxes we usually try to pay highest taxes as far as possible so that you don't lose out on any regulation sure uh, yeah. Rachna is asking, how do you store Bitcoin and wallet? Uh, Rachna, a wallet on an exchange is very similar to your wallet on, uh, let's say, you know, Zerodha or Sher Khan or money control, and you just store it in that. Uh, or even for, for that matter, maybe not as easy as Google Pay, but very similar to that, right? You just go to Wazirx and you have your wallet assigned to you already. There's a funds page. You deposit your funds in there, you trade, and it shows you all the all your portfolio. That's about it. You don't have to go ahead and create a new wallet unless you really want a self-hosted wallet, which you want to maintain on your own. As a newbie, I wouldn't recommend that. But later on, think about how to create your own wallet as well. Sure. Uh, the next one is from Farooq, who's asking, can we have multiple accounts like Wazirx, CoinDCX, etc.? You can have any number of Okay. And uh, the next one is from Subramaniam. Why would someone sell their coins ahead of a four-year hike cycle? They won't, right? That's why the price is going up. You got you got the core of why next time someone asks you, yeah, why is this Bitcoin going from $10,000 to $50,000 in six months? What's, what's happening? You know the answer now. Why is it going? Because no one is selling it. Absolutely no one is selling it with Bitcoin today. So what do you do? Okay. Uh, Amit is asking, what are the advantages of using personal wallets versus exchange-based wallets? Uh, advantages of personal wallet is that you hold your own crypto. Okay. So Bitcoin was invented because we wanted no middlemen, right? Today's exchanges are a middleman in a way. Uh, ideal scenario is that you transact peer to peer. So when you hold your own wallet, you are owner of your keys. Uh, when you own your keys, you own your own uh, crypto. No one can take it away from you. No one can shut down tomorrow and you know lose. Uh, this is something that people uh, respect uh, because today the trust level in institutions is really, really low. So that's the only reason why you would hold your own crypto. Otherwise, it's okay safe on some hosted wallet. Okay. And Pulkit is asking how to mine coins. Uh, Pulkit, it depends on what coin you want to mine. Bitcoin mining is no longer too profitable in India. Not, not many people are doing that. Unless you are in, in a very cold country uh, with cheap electricity, mining Bitcoin is difficult. 
mining any other coin don't get into that uh, most of the mining coins turn out to be sham fake scam and all of that so it's better to stay away from that uh, if you are absolutely absolutely sure why this mining and why this token will uh, work it's okay otherwise i've heard of too many coins everyone asks about these coins and then they end up mining it on the phone on the laptop it's not possible these days to do that even if you do that the coins value might just drop and your mining tokens are worth 10 rupees then so don't do that i think pulkit also is asking about doge coin a lot i have to address this otherwise someone ends up buying doge coin when elon musk tweets about it doge coin is a meme okay it's meant to be fun the founders of doge coin abandoned it uh 3 4 years ago maybe even more i don't know it doesn't matter avoid this coin at every cost uh even if you think you can make money just avoid this coin okay most people don't understand what doge coin is unless you have been in the market for 3 4 years it's very difficult to even comprehend why this guy is ripple okay <laughs> i had to wait for this sandesh asked uh, ripple uh, ripple uh, i'm not sure uh, i can uh, there is an entire army looking after ripple so i can't say anything in public but look at the decentralization okay any coin that has a ceo is not sufficiently decentralized lot of rumors going around very high risk Uh, of course people have made money out of these coins including doge coin ripple all of that doesn't mean that you should get into something that's risky there are just too many ways to lose money in crypto uh if you have slightest doubt about any coin just stay away from it and ripple has a big mark called sec on top of it so let's probably stay away from it next question uh what if an exchange goes bust uh an exchange goes bust usually exchange tokens are stored uh in cold wallets most of them uh so you get that back uh, some people still lose their money maybe we don't know what happens last big hack was mount gox uh which happened and a lot of people lost money so centralization is always a problem so parin i think chandni is having some issues with her network chandni is it okay now yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can okay. keep taking questions. Yeah. These questions are getting more and more interesting. <laughs> yes, it and is. also take them, Parin. If you if you just think yeah. it's faster that way, that's not okay. a problem. Okay. So let me just go go through questions quickly. Uh, I think one one thing Santosh has asked here is Santosh Yadav has asked, do we think it's more rewards based mechanism along with decentralized digital currency? That's of course. Santosh, uh, this entire sector, I won't hesitate in admitting, is based on greed. lot of people are getting lot of incentives to promote lot of currencies that's why this is working uh that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a future or it doesn't have fundamentals it's like the way the way i look at it is imagine internet in 1995 okay how would you deal with it if i were to tell you in 1995 okay this is a dial up connection it just sends it takes 15 minutes to send one email but one day i am going to change the entire world with this you are not going to listen to me similarly uh, without bitcoin price going up we wouldn't have 100 people on this webinar right why are we having this discussion because everyone wants to make money so of course the rewards are important they play as an incentive that doesn't mean that the technology doesn't have a promise the technology as yet is just not scalable enough it has an entire scalability challenge in front of it hopefully the smartest minds in the world are working on bitcoin and in next few years if we can scale it up ethereum we can scale it up we are set and then there is a lot more there are a lot more use cases and use cases give fundamental value and fundamental value is what we hope will drive this sector in the future after all of this speculation is done right nitin is asking a very interesting question nitin this is a billion dollar question is there a way or trick to know when the bull market will start 
I already told you how to do that. Okay, follow the halving cycle. Uh, this is a billion dollar question now. If you make money, I deserve something. Okay. Uh, Parag, uh, Parag, uh, just post your questions in public. I think you are direct messaging me. Uh, he's asking, uh, what is the transaction fee to transfer Bitcoin from Vazirex to another Vazirex account? Ideally, don't do that. It's considered payment. Okay. If you transfer your Bitcoin to my account, why are you doing it? It's considered payment. I have to straight away pay tax on that. Okay. So whatever your use case is, talk to your CA first and don't do it. A uh, fee to transfer any crypto from Vazirex to Vazirex or Vazirex to any other account is dependent on the blockchain fee. Bitcoin fee right now ranges from $40 to $100. Ethereum fee ranges from $20 to I think $80, $90. Depends on the blockchain fee, right? Uh, Nitin also asked book. Uh, Nitin, uh, first thing is to understand the fundamentals, Bitcoin standard. Once you understand Bitcoin standard, uh, I will give you an entire list of books that you can read uh, to get the fundamentals cleared and then start investing into this. I will I will paste the link of books. Uh, I think someone asked taxation question. We've already addressed that. List of books, yes. Uh, yeah, Simon has already read Andrea's Antonopoulos. Andrea, Andrea's Antonopoulos is another really great uh, person from crypto sector who has a great YouTube channel and three books. You can read all of them. It's amazing what he's uh, put out there. Uh, Dhruv is asking why are there huge transaction charges from transferring Bitcoin? Uh, Dhruv, that's because the network is clogged. Right now, Bitcoin, Ethereum, most coins have a scalability challenge in front of them. Today, we can't even look at these things as money. Even if the government is worried, it's not money. It's just an asset because transaction fees are just way too high for something like this. Okay. Uh, I think Jagdish is asking for chart reading. Uh, Jagdish, there is a there is a conflict in the industry saying whether you can do technical analysis or not. I'm not sure whether you can do enough technical analysis on these charts, uh, but uh, I'm not the right person for that as well. Grand Regency, someone is asking, how do you rate Polygon and VeChain? I don't know about VeChain at all. Polygon is amazing. It's an Indian company. They've done phenomenal work, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm recommending that token. Okay. so. Don't ask, see, that's the thing. We are talking about finance. Uh, we are talking about fundamentals here. If if you are asking me for tips, I'm sure you will go and ask people for tips on Telegram, Twitter, your friends and all of that. Uh, ask them to read Polygon's code. Can they understand what, what is their code? If they can't, just don't take that tip. Okay, this is, this is the problem with crypto. Everyone is just talking with half knowledge. Uh, trying to understand which coins to trade and what's happening. Absolutely, maybe, you know, 20 people in the country understand what Polygon does. Not more than that. So who are you asking? Why are you asking these questions? Don't go for coin tips and stuff like that. This doesn't work like stock markets. Okay. When these coins go down, they'll be 90%, 97% down, right? Uh, Madhura is asking, is Zen Ripple meant to be useful for transfer funds very fast? Of course, Madhura, then what is the point of a centralized coin transferring funds very fast? UPI is the fastest, largest mechanism that we've ever had. Ripple and UPI both are centralized. So why are you using Ripple? And if they're in the case again, still, it doesn't matter. It's a centralized coin. Look at how decentralized it is. Okay. Uh, this is the problem. This is all half knowledge. Just because you can transfer funds fast doesn't mean it's a great thing. Right. Uh, Cardano better than Ethereum. See again, absolutely no one can read Cardano's code. So how, how, how do you say Cardano is better than Ethereum? If you can't read Ethereum's code, you can't read Cardano's code. Who is telling you this? Cardano's marketing team and Ethereum's marketing team is telling you this, right? So think about it. Uh, Jagdish is asking if 
is it legal to use cryptocurrencies in india as indian government decide to launch new coin so what government is launching uh, has nothing to do with other cryptocurrencies out there you you can see inr and gold have existed forever same way inr and bitcoin will coexist right uh how to judge whether a coin will perform well not taking this webinar right that's not true uh but uh, you can't you can't do these things okay you can't go and ask people uh, how do you how do you judge this is the formula that you have to develop on your own i've told you the key elements key elements are market cycle and decentralization out here check that out then comes technology right so understand technology uh nitin is asking what do you mean by reading a coin's code uh nitin i mean open source code uh you can go and read google bitcoin's code okay and you can read where this code is right most of the code is supposed to be open source Uh, are you typing something in the chat yeah. window or on the screen yes. i just pasted can't... i just pasted a link okay. this is where you can check the code okay uh similarly most decentralized coins should have such codes okay uh if your coin doesn't have this code open source you are at the mercy of founder or team that drives this right so ripple's code is not open source we don't know what's going on behind it right tomorrow if the supply increase the supply by 10x you don't know bitcoin is not like that ethereum is not like that ethereum's code is open source right so you have to check out these things before you understand if you are a developer who understands code great you will do very well in trading uh and uh, someone is saying uh, riya again direct messaging are there any indian companies accepting crypto or will do so in the futures so uh, riya i think right now in india cryptos are look at looked at as assets uh, consider it gold again right uh, if you want to go and pay for your chai or coffee in crypto right now no country in the no company in, in india is doing that primarily because there is no regulatory clarity so we don't know what's going to happen so don't pay for stuff in crypto as of now just hold and trade and do whatever you want so uh once we have regulatory clarity hopefully we will have some framework where companies like tesla uh in india can accept bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies uh it's too early to say right now uh sachin is saying sachin agarwal is saying if there is a crypto ban in india and everyone tries to liquidate uh by selling will there be enough buyers in india i can't say i just can't say but indian market is also connected to the global market so you have to see how much arbitrage uh people will do as well right a lot of arbitrage goes on from india to global market so if that keeps going then you have global players buying your tokens uh rachna is ask is <laughs> rachna is asking if the indian government buys can i transfer my coins to hardware wallet and hide it yes 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 rachna you should not hide your coins from the government never ever do that government will be able to track it they may not be able to confiscate it but why do you want to do something illegal don't do something illegal if the government absolutely bans bitcoin we can't do anything about it except you know get a singapore citizenship or portugal citizenship and move uh, apart from that you can't do anything uh, most likely government won't do something like that you know they are not stupid they are very intelligent people they understand they are taking their time to come up with regulations and finance minister said on tv saying we are not going to ban it there will definitely be no blanket ban which is a very positive sign sashank is saying hoarding uh, sashank if you hold crypto it is going to be traced some day right nitin is asking can they ban uh, technically not 
today torrents are banned in india we all know how easy it is to download torrents in india so technologically they can't ban uh, cryptos uh, but if they make it illegal uh, we want to be good citizens right we don't want to be criminals in the country so we will end up doing what the government says uh Ayush is saying, "How does Vazirex get the coin onboarded to its trading platform? Since there are limited coins, so Ayush, great question. We onboard co coins uh, that are usually listed on Binance because Binance vets them. They verify everything uh, is right with the coin, uh, team is right, and a lot of other checks. And then they are onboard, and then we onboard it on Vazirex. So a very limited choice, but all the coins are vetted. So that's that's the safety part of it." I think I can take some questions from top. Uh, we have five minutes. Mm. Someone asked about, uh, you know, RBI uh, banning cryptocurrency. Again, RBI doesn't have the authority to ban cryptocurrency. They have uh, tried in past and they could not because Supreme Court overruled their decision. Uh, but the government surely can. There is a slight risk, for sure. Uh, hopefully, government will not do something like that. Right? Pramod asked an interesting question. Uh, on a lighter note, why the name Vazirex? Uh, it's Vazir, right? So we can move anywhere. That's all. That's the idea. Not, not too deep logic into that. Uh, Jagdish, yes, tax, you have to pay tax. I think we are done with the questions, uh, Chandni. Uh, so, Parin, would you like to just do a quick recap for our audience to a starter's guide to open your account and start trading? Just yeah, like I think, 30 seconds. Uh, one second. I'll just take you through the interface really quickly. Uh, take us through in terms of opening the uh, one, not just the opening the account, but trading, and then at what point do you pay the taxes? So I think let us let let's look at it more from that. Okay. I think the interface is not a problem. We okay. shared that link with most of our. So uh, this is the link. When you go to this link, you will sign up. You will reach on a sign up page. Uh, let me just uh, take you through the interface very quickly. So. Okay, this is how it, the screen looks. Okay, so this so is- So we're not able to see the screen again, Parin. Oh, okay. Yeah, can yeah, you? Good. Yeah, good. So this is the screen. When you go to that link, you just click on sign up here. Uh, you will see email, password, everything. Uh, once you sign up, here you will get an email confirmation, email confirmation, and then you put in your number, uh, you do your KYC. Uh, once you do your KYC, you can log in, uh, log in and you go, uh, this, you get a screen like this. This is the exchange screen, right? This is where all the tokens are listed. You can choose what you want to trade in. Uh, you usually go to the funds page. When you go to the funds page, you can see a deposit button. And today, I think today we've enabled, uh, tested the UPI deposit. Uh, usually you can do an NEFT, RTGS, and you can deposit funds. Simple as that. Once you deposit your funds, you come to this screen, you decide what you want to trade into. So let's say you want to buy Bitcoin. You just put Bitcoin here. You go to that screen. This is BTC INR screen. Right now, I don't have any open orders. Otherwise, you would have had open orders. This is a chart. So right now it's trading at 43 lakh, 45,000 rupees, right? Now what I can see here is the trade history. This is what, this is the trades that have just happened. Now, what I do is I just go here and I say, Hey, I want to buy, let's say one BTC. It automatically fills the price here. Or I can say, let's say I want to buy one BTC. I want to buy BTC worth 2000 rupees. So it's showing me for 2000 rupees, I can get so much of BTC. And I just click on buy BTC and it places an order. The order will be here. It has to match with someone selling that same amount. 
So if it is a low amount, usually it happens very quickly. But let's say you want to buy like 10 BTC, uh, it takes time. Sometimes you may not have liquidity. So you will have to hi hire the price. The price goes high and you just buy it from there. So this is the basics of the interface, right? Yeah, it is a 24 seven market. So uh, you can decide accordingly. Okay. So I think we've come to the end of the session. I'd like to uh, request Maloney from Mumbai Angels to uh, do a quick wrap up. Thank you, Shilpa. Thank you, Pain, for this fantastic, engaging and informative session. And thank you for the audience for tuning in and keeping it interactive. We have shared Pain's social media handles in the chat window. Please feel free to reach out to him in case there are any queries that you may have which have not been completely addressed in this session. Our next, next masterclass is on negotiating the Series A for angels and founders. This will be conducted by Mr. Kaushik Rajan, who is founder of Strikers Legal on 7th of April. Also, there is another masterclass, which is on FDI, navigating the legal framework. This will be conducted by Ms. Akshi Singhal, who is partner at Rajendra Kumar Singhal and Associates. Make sure you keep track of all our events by checking out our website and social media. We have shared the links in the chat window. Thank you once again for your participation and presence. A big thank you to you, Parin, and, and to Azir for conducting this masterclass. Hope to see you at our next session in the coming week. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mumbai Angels team. Thank you, everyone, for being a lovely audience.